Good afternoon, America. Welcome to the Inside Scoop from Washington. I am your host, Mark Levine, reporting live from the Center for American Progress in Washington, D.C. Um, the president's lawyer and supposed defender, Rudy Giuliani, uh, seems to be changing the ball on what matters in the investigation as to whether our president has committed treason or at least collusion with an enemy nation or conspiracy to commit espionage against the United States. You see, first we heard that no one, no one, no one in the Trump campaign had any contacts with anyone in the Russian government. Um, now some 82 people have been proved to have done that. So then it became, well, uh, sure, people talk with the Russians, but uh, not about any kind of collusion. I mean, it was just sort of ordinary conversation. Uh, we have um, 13 indictments of Russians and several, by the way, of Americans too on that. And then it became, well, okay, the Trump campaign, lower level people that, that Trump never heard of. Yeah, they may have talked to Russians, but no one really important. And then we learned, of course, that uh, his campaign manager, Paul Manafort, his son, Don Jr., his son-in-law, Jerry Kushner, had all met with the Russians. Oh, but then they told us, well, they didn't talk about anything. They, they talked about adoptions. They didn't talk about anything related to the campaign. Oh, what? They talked about dirt on Hillary Clinton? They did? Oh, well, um, okay, but Donald Trump, the president, didn't know anything about the meeting in Trump Tower where he lives and works that his son and son-in-law and campaign manager were all attending this unimportant meeting. All three of them, in the middle of a busy campaign, decided that it really wasn't that important enough for Donald to attend, he would just have his three most trusted people attend. And they never, never told him about the meeting, uh, just as, um, well, Donald Trump Jr., when he lied about it, wasn't told to lie about it by Donald Trump. Oh, he was told to lie about it by Donald Trump? Well, it's not like his, the president dictated what he said. Oh, the president did dictate what he said? Okay, well, uh, the president didn't know beforehand about the meeting uh, to get dirt on Hillary Clinton, right? I mean, I mean, his son would never tell him about something that he said love it to when asked if he could get uh, dirt from foreign espionage on Hillary Clinton. Um, he wouldn't tell his dad about that. Just because he tells his dad about everything doesn't mean he'd tell him about this thing, right? Well, um, now apparently Michael Cohen... Trump's attorney, the guy that Giuliani and the president said we had so much trust in. This was a believable guy. This was an honest guy. Um, now he says that, yes, Donald Trump did know all about it all along, which frankly isn't that surprising. So now, now we have a new argument, okay? We've gone from didn't know about any Russians, didn't talk to the Russians. It wasn't important. Okay, it happened. Okay, it was important. But Donald Trump didn't get involved. Okay, he was involved. Now there's a new claim. New claim, folks. Even if, even if Donald Trump conspired with the Russians to use the results of illegal espionage to get dirt on his political opponent so they could install him as president, that's, that, that's, that's not a crime. Rudy said, what? in the words of Tucker Carlson, so what? It happens every day. A foreign enemy installs our president uh, in exchange for the president doing policies to help that foreign enemy. I mean, it's as old as uh, Brutus killed Caesar, maybe? I'm not sure can't really recall an example in American history, but I do think it's illustrative to compare other examples of something that people might call treason. Uh, let's go back to Benedict Arnold. Remember old Benedict? Really an American hero, far more so than Donald Trump. He led American troops in battle against the British. Didn't like that uh, his commander-in-chief, George Washington, didn't put him in a, enough of a high-up position in the Continental Army, 
So he um, sold some military secrets for the British and led troops against American forces. Pretty bad stuff. Yeah, I'd say that's a traitor. But um, he never really conspired to remove our president from office and install himself as our leader. So what about Aaron Burr? Remember Aaron Burr, the guy that killed Alexander Hamilton? If you've seen the musical. Uh, he was accused of treason. Uh, he had a whole trial for it, actually. Uh, he supposedly was going to uh, make a land deal with Mexico uh, about uh, you know, allowing uh, him to have great holdings in Mexican territory in return for, for giving up America uh, to the Mexicans. And um, he was actually found not guilty. Uh, that's a long time ago. Let's, let's get a little more recent. Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor, a day that will live in infamy. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt called. The murder at Pearl Harbor was the biggest single day of killing by foreigners against Americans uh, until September 11th, actually. Um, we killed each other in the Civil War a bit more. But, but in Pearl Harbor, what happened in Pearl Harbor? Let's say that an American conspired with the Japanese government to bomb American warships and kill thousands of Americans. That would be awful. That would certainly be treasonous. But Pearl Harbor, which killed thousands of American servicemen, never really was an attack on our system of government. I mean, it brought us into World War II. It led to a, a brutal, destructive war where hundreds of thousands of Americans died, of course, I think many historians would think we should have gotten that war sooner, actually. Pearl Harbor may have helped us get into a war and stop uh, some of the greatest evil ever been on the planet. But um, the Japanese never actually threatened to put Hirohito or any other Japanese person or any American working for the Japanese in charge of our government. Nope, that, that never happened. Okay, okay, Watergate. Watergate. Was Watergate an impeachable offense? Well, the House Judiciary Committee thought so, voted to impeach Richard Nixon. And Richard Nixon was so worried about being impeached and removed from office by a two-thirds vote, including his Republicans, that he resigned from office lest he be impeached and removed. What, what, what did Richard do? Let's see. He, we don't even know that he ordered the break-in at the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate Hotel. Um, that's actually never been historically proven. He may have. He may have. He may have not. We really don't know that fact. We know that a break-in occurred of the president's men, and we do know that he tried to cover it up. We got tapes, got the hush money. So the president's people hack in to the Democratic National Committee to get dirt on Nixon's political opponent, George McGovern, in order to help Richard Nixon win re-election as president. Now, collecting dirt on an opponent is legal if it's done through legal means, right? If I determine that Donald Trump cheated 30,000 people at Trump University and want to I don't know the number is 30,000. I think it was actually $30,000. Excuse the number. I don't remember how many hundreds of people were cheated at Trump University. But if I learn that my political opponent has cheated people and I find out legally and I want to put in a campaign commercial, that's all well and good. But if I want to break into his home and steal his documents to use against him, that's not legal. It's a crime to steal private information from someone. Watergate was not a crime because Richard Nixon found some dirt on McGovern. It was a crime because they broke in to the Democratic National Committee headquarters and stole information that didn't belong to them and tried to use it in a political campaign. But to be fair to Richard Nixon and to the Watergate burglars, this was a domestic affair. This wasn't in service of an enemy nation. This was to help Richard Nixon win re-election. And it was illegal because stealing is illegal. So it wasn't treason. It wasn't even bribery. It was merely a high crime and misdemeanor sufficient to remove the president of the United States. 
and I think put Nixon in jail for a number of years if Gerald Ford hadn't pardoned him. Again, let's compare. Hacking occurred, stealing occurred. The crime of espionage, when a foreign government steals American information, is actually greater than the crime of burglary. Burglary's bad. Espionage is worse. Burglary isn't treason. Espionage, when an American conspires to commit it, is treason. Treason's a greater crime than burglary. Burglary will get you in jail for a few years. Treason, the maximum penalty for treason, is death. It's execution. We have executed people for treason. We did in the Civil War. We did with the Rosenbergs in World War II. Okay. Did Donald Trump order, order the Russians to commit espionage? Well, even if he didn't, again, covering it up and obstructing justice would be sufficient. We learned that with Richard Nixon. Whether or not Richard Nixon ordered the Watergate burglars, he did try to cover it up. He did try to obstruct justice. He fired the prosecutor, the special prosecutor investigating him in order to obstruct justice. And that was number one in the articles of impeachment. So even if Donald Trump didn't order the conspiracy, didn't order the espionage, it doesn't matter. But I seem to recall, I seem to recall our current president when he was a candidate, literally asking the Russians on TV to commit espionage, to get dirt on Hillary Clinton. Russia, if you're listening, he said, find me those emails. He didn't say by filing a Freedom of Information Act request. I think Donald knew how the Russians find emails. It's not lawfully. So Richard Nixon, we don't know whether or not he ordered the break-in in secret, but we do know that Donald Trump ordered the Russians to do something in open, undisputed ways. And we also know now that the Russians began to act that same day. So we got to be fair to Richard Nixon here because he committed a far lesser crime than Donald Trump. Burglary versus treason, a break-in, a physical break-in versus a cyber break-in. There's no distinction there in the law. And covering it up? Well, the president has done nothing but cover it up. Have you heard his 100 stories? Have you seen the fact that he fired Jim Comey because of the Russian investigation? Have you heard his 100th tweet? By the way, today marks the 100th tweet where he called the Mueller investigation a witch hunt. Did you know that Nixon also called the Watergate investigation a witch hunt? Those poor witches in Salem, Massachusetts. That was a witch hunt. This, not so much. Compared to Ken Starr, right? I mean, Bill Clinton was impeached. And Ken Starr, how many people did Ken Starr convict in that Watergate investigation? How many people, how many people did he get a conviction of? How many people were indicted? Um, zero? I believe the answer is zero were even indicted. But, I mean, he did discover the president cheated on his wife. That's true. I mean, Donald Trump didn't just cheat on his wife, but is accused of 39, 39 examples of unwanted sexual touching. That's distinct from all the consensual cheating he did on his wife. Does anyone care that this guy was found on a tape to want to grab women by the private parts? I got to take a break, folks. There's too much to talk about here. If you want to call in, it's 888-MARK, 888-48-MARK, 888-48-6275. Right back, right after this. I will tell you this. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. He's a Bible-quoting, Constitution-loving, flag-waving, red-blooded, liberal American. He's Mark Levine. Give him a call now at 888-488-MARK. That's 888-488-6275. 
Well done, Mark. Get, you got that clip just, just Thank in you. time. That was beautiful. That was perfect. I didn't even have time to ask you to do it. You just read my mind. That was that was reading great. the reading the mind. That was great. I know I went way over. Uh, what do you got? Like ninety seconds or something? No, you like say you and you have about two two minute two and a half minutes All when right. you get back. Right. Hello, Facebook audience. Sorry for the slow start today. Um, I was hoping to get at all the evidence of treason in the first break, uh, first before the break. What was I thinking? There's just no way. <laughs> the evidence is too overwhelming. Ugh. Got another computer here. That's the thing about being on Facebook is it's it's kind of like having Michael Cohen in the room. I know you're there. I know you're there. It's okay. colluding about Russians, <laughs> which I'm not even know if that's a crime, colluding about Russians. <laughs> you start, you yeah. start analyzing the crime. The hacking is the crime. The well, hacking that, is that certainly is the original well, the crime. President yeah. hack. That's, not, that's the original crime. He didn't crime. pay them for hacking. And as you know, it has led to the ah. president to meeting with the Russians. If, if you, you have to hack the information from the Russians. You, Hey, Mark. Yes. Um, go to Google and look up Washington Post, uh, Giuliani making case Trump wants to hear. Got it. And there's a video in there. It's about a 30 second video. If you can get that in time, we can play that coming out. I can share with you the link. I'll tell you what, let me do that. While you're looking for it, I'm going to try to get on and share with you the link. Um, it says it's 157 in length. Uh, the one I'm looking for is, is just uh, 30 seconds in length. Hold on. Let me get on and I'll listen to it. I found. I'm sorry. I found it. Got it. Thirty it. seconds. He's yep. talking with the woman on. CNN. Yeah, J D. Durkin is yeah, the yeah, tweets yeah, from. Yeah. Okay, that's the right one. All right, I'll have it ready. Let's play that coming in. You got it. And now, the voice of reason in an unreasonable world, Mark Levine. Colluding about Russians, <laughs> which I'm not even know if that's a crime, colluding about Russians. Okay. <laughs> you start, you yeah. start analyzing the crime. The hacking is the crime. The uh, hacking that is the crime. certainly is the original Well, the president didn't yes. hack. Was not. That's the original He didn't problem. pay them for hacking. And as you know, it has led other ah. the meeting with the Russians. If, if you got the hacked information from the Russians here at CNN and you played it, would you be in jeopardy of going to jail? Of course not. The meeting with the Russians, um, that, how can you be Welcome back to the Inside Scoop. I'm your host, Mark Levine. Rudy, Rudy, the president didn't hack. 
the president didn't hack, Richard Nixon did not physically go into the Watergate building and break in. He didn't. We don't know that he did. He didn't. No, he didn't. He didn't. All we know is that his people went in and did it and brought him back the information um, at um, – we don't even know that he ordered them to. We just know that he liked the information, used it, and then tried really hard to cover it up and obstructed justice. That's all Richard Nixon did. And what happened to him? Was he did he was he forced to resign? Oh wait, I, I think I think he was. Uh, Rudy, <clears throat> dear, um, when you conspire with someone to commit a crime, you don't actually have to be there. If you order a hitman to assassinate your spouse, guess what? You're still guilty of conspiracy to commit murder, even if you're not in the room when it happens. Rudy, do you know nothing about American law? Conspiracy to commit espionage is a crime. It's actually a treasonable offense, as well as being an impeachable offense. In fact, when you look at impeachable offenses, Richard Nixon was only impeached for high crimes and misdemeanors, like obstructing justice. But there's two things in our Constitution that go before high crimes and misdemeanors. Number two is bribery. And number one, treason. Treason is the lead impeachable offense. You might want to read your Constitution, Rudy Giuliani. This is Mark Levine. Call in if you want. 888-48-MARK, 888-48-6275. Back after this. My name is Mira Batra. I have... Yeah, that's a crazy clip. <laughs> you got your chat on, buddy? Uh, I do. I do. I do. Gotcha. Okay, I see it. Thank you. You got it? Yeah. Okay. This would be the... We, uh, if we did it today, it'd be the every other like we were trying to do at least with him, just as a heads up. So no, 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 no. today would be okay That's by fine. that That's rule. Fine. That's fine. <laughs> Restroom be right back. Okay. Hello, Facebook audience. Just getting more information to uh, share with you. Okay, I'm back. Okay.
at the end of the broadcast, I'm going to talk a little bit about the economy. Sounds good. And the children. Back to the aggressive progressive. Here you go, Mark. Ready. Welcome back to the Inside Scoop. I'm your host, Mark Levine. Um, the president keeps changing his mind about, um, well, how often he colluded with the Russians and whether or not this uh, collusion or conspiracy or espionage or treason is even a crime at all. So let's let's just let's just go through it here. Um, November 2016. There's no communications whatsoever. Here's his campaign spokesperson, Hope Hicks. Quote, it never happened. There was no communication between the campaign and any foreign entity during the campaign, unquote. Pretty strong. Until three months later. In February 2017, what Sarah Huckabee Sanders said, this is a non-story because of the best of our knowledge, no context took place. They've gone from there were none to we don't know of any. Until a month later when they said there were communications, but they weren't planned. Donald Trump Jr. Quote, did I meet with people that were Russian? I'm sure, I'm sure I did, but none that were set up. None that I could think of at the moment. And certainly none that I was representing the campaign in any way, shape, or form. By the way, this is all in the Washington Post. Thank you for laying it all out for me. I'm, I'm just reading it. So that was, they went from uh, no communications to we don't know of any communications to, yeah, there were communications. We just didn't plan them or set them up or do them on behalf of the campaign until July 2017 when um, Trump Jr. said, okay, there was a planned meeting, but it was primarily about adoption. Quote, we primarily discussed a program about the adoption of Russian children that was active and popular with American families years ago, it was since ended by the Russian government, but it was not a campaign issue at the time and there was no follow-up. Got it? Yeah, they met with the Russians and it was planned, but it was about adoption until a day later when he goes against his father's dictated statement, which, by the way, was denied that his father knew about it and then denied that his father dictated and then admitted that his father dictated. And now we know it's a lie because a day later, Donald Trump Jr. says, yeah, it was to discuss the campaign, but no, there were no details, no supporting information uh, that she had no meaningful information. A few days later, we get the emails. It's dirt on Hillary Clinton. It's not some Russian lawyer. It's directly from the Russian government. It's Putin's agents. And Donald Trump knew that all along and said that he, quote, loved it, unquote. Okay, but December last year, collusion isn't a crime, Donald Trump says. I mean, there was no collusion, but if it were, no, he said even it was. Even if there was collusion, it's not a crime. Jay, Jay Sekulow, for something to be a crime, there has to be a statute you claim being violated. There's no crime of collusion. Yeah, it's called conspiracy. The president likes the word collusion. Maybe he doesn't know what it means, but it's called conspiracy. That's the legal definition, Jay. Anytime you want me to teach a little bit about the law, you, you, you let me know. Um, by the way, none of this has any connection with the classified information, the topper than top secret information that we know Donald Trump gave the Russians in the White House Oval Office without allowing American press there. We only know about it because Russia press reported on it. Remember those Hillary Clinton emails when the lowest of lowest secret confidential information may have been disclosed, but there's no proof that anyone ever found it out. In this case, the President of the United States is turning over information so top secret that it's been reported that an agent, one of our agents, or one of the agents of one of our allies may have been murdered. We lost a spy the hard way because of Donald Trump. So the Russians did get something for this. But May, this year, May, Giuliani says, even if there were meaningful information obtained from the Russians, we didn't use it. Quote, and even if it comes from a Russian or a German or an American, it doesn't matter. And they never used it is the main thing. They never used it. They rejected it. If there was collusion with the Russians, 
they would have used it. But Don Jr. just said he would love to use it. So they didn't reject it. They wanted it. Donald Trump asked for it. In fact, the New York Times reported in May that that wasn't the only meeting about getting foreign help to get dirt on their opponent. There was one between the election and Donald Trump and an emissary of Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates. Quote, this is Trump Jr.'s attorney now. Quote, they pitched Mr. Trump Jr. on a social media platform or marketing strategy. He, he was not interested, and that's the end of it. All right. July 16th, 2018. That's just a couple weeks ago. Trump can't collude because Trump doesn't know Putin. Trump said after bragging how much he knew Putin, quote, there was no collusion. I didn't know the president, meaning the dictator of Russia, Putin. I didn't know him. There was nobody to collude with. And now, today, today, okay, maybe there was collusion. Michael Cohen has said that, you know, Trump knew all about all of this, knew about the Trump meeting in real time, before it happened, during it happened, after it happened, despite all those denials. But Trump wasn't physically there. He wasn't at the meeting. And we all know that Richard Nixon had to be physically in the Watergate to remove him from office. Right? I don't know what's next. Yes, the president committed treason. Yes, the president conspired. Yes, the Russians told him all about the espionage the minute that he asked for it. Yes, Donald Trump ordered Russian agents to spy on Hillary Clinton. And in return, he promised to give Russia really good foreign policy. But, 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 but Donald Trump didn't, 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 um, you know, he did become president because of it. He didn't, um, What didn't he do? Isn't this enough? Look, they're scrambling. They're drowning. They have to keep saying something or those ignorant people that believe everything they say will have nothing to hang on to. But they have nothing to hang on to. Their lies are so obvious and so stupid that nobody, including the president or Giuliani or anybody of any intelligence believes any of them. Does that mean the Republicans will impeach? No, they want power. They're more than willing to allow the president to commit a little treason, to allow our greatest foreign enemy to control United States foreign policy if it means they get to keep their congressional seat. But you, my fellow Americans, can have rise to be a little bit more patriotic than the Republicans serving you in Congress. You can vote if it's November, and you can let the President of the United States and Rudy Giuliani and all those toadies in Congress know that you think the President should be at least as patriotic as, well, as you are, or I am or any of the other 300 million Americans that did not collude with the foreign power to install a president of the United States. Yeah. Michael from the Bronx, Old Faithful, line three. How are you, sir? Hey, good buddy. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. You know, so, you know the whole idea of patriotism is just what you're saying and not some stupid debate of taking a knee during the national anthem at a football game or, so or, or right grabbing there. the flag i mean hug, hugging the flag apparently that's how you yeah. show patriotism in donald trump's america but what gets me mark and i applaud you 100 percent for discussing these because you yourself are a lawyer all right yep and i cannot believe granted i'm not a lawyer but there are many of us patriotic devout americans that know what the law is and what is ethical. And quite frankly, the stuff that comes out of Giuliani's mouth, you would have to question. You know what? Actually... I, I am glad that Rudy Giuliani is Trump's lawyer because I can't think of a more miserable lawyer or less, less competent advocate for him to have. Mark. You know, I'm glad he didn't hire Alan Dershowitz. I mean, I, you know, I don't 
trust what he says either. But Dershowitz is smart. Giuliani's an idiot. All right, so Wrong. go, go, Rudy, go. You just keep tying Wrong. yourself Wrong. in knots. You, you, you do it for the country. <laughs> Mark, I got even something better than that, and that is you would have to wonder and question if Giuliani is legitimate, legitimately licensed to practice law, and because of not just the competency and the stupid errors that not even a rookie lawyer would make, but just just like when he and Trump his partner in crime, I wouldn't call them both partners in crime. They always kept saying to Obama, show us your birth certificate, show us your birth certificate. Yeah, yeah. Well, now Michael from the Bronx here will say to Rudy Giuliani, and I based this on an article, the late Wayne Barrett written at the Village Voice here in New York City. The Village Voice, unfortunately, is out of print, and Wayne Barrett, as I said, had passed on. Okay. He had stated Wrap up. that Rudy Giuliani uh, had to surrender his law license because of gross prosecutorial misconduct. That wouldn't surprise me, but that's, 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 that's not what I'm focused on. I mean, I, thank you for your call, Michael. I always appreciate it when you do call. I do have some breaking news I want to share. It apparently just came out this second, or at least today. Um, Giuliani has now admitted that Michael Cohen claims that there was yet another meeting with the Russians two days before the Trump Tower meeting involving Don Jr., Paul Manafort, campaign manager, son-in-law Jared Kushner, and Rick Gates, working for the campaign, to go over strategy for the Russian meeting. What? Wait, Don Jr. said, oh, it was 30 minutes. It didn't last long. She started talking about adoptions. We ended the meeting. But there was a pre-meeting two days before that meeting. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It, I mean, this just came out, folks. Yes, even more evidence of treason, conspiracy, and um, law-breaking that I'm sure they're going to next claim Donald Trump knew nothing about. This is Mark Levine. Call in if you want. 888-48-MARK, 888-48-6275. When we come back, I'll talk a little bit about the economy. Never confuse Mark Levine with right-winger Mark Levin. The second E stands for empathy which the other Mark lacks. Give him a call now at 888-488-MARK. That's 888-488-6275. Wow, Mark. That second tweet's a whopper. The first one was like, yeah, no big deal. I already know that. The second one you said. Now, I think, just to be clear, I, I, it's not a, a huge thing, but you said they, they, they met with the Russians two days before. Now, the tweet is saying oh, they, they, they met. Oh, strategy. Yeah, all right, so all right, all right. it's a little different. It's not that they met the uh, Russians, but it shows right, that they knew about right. the meeting Fair enough. Fair and they enough. planned. So just no, maybe no, no, a clarification, no, 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 no. but it's still a big deal. I read it quickly. I will correct that as soon as I get back on it. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. I got your back. No, no, no. Well, I just read it. Well, you know, you shared it with me in, on the air, so. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. The more wow. this guy talks, like you said. Reading some of these comments.
And now, the voice of reason in an unreasonable world, Mark Levine. Ready, Mark? Yeah. Here you go. Welcome back to Inside Scoop. I'm your host, Mark Levine. Treason is not the only issue in the news, believe it or not. I think it is important that we talk about other things. Donald Trump has been crowing about the economy, talking about the fact that uh, we have 4% growth in this one quarter, the second quarter of 2018, which is larger than normal. Um, it's not as high as Obama got in 2014, but hey, it's, you know, it's, it's good showing this quarter. What could cause that growth? Well, growth or the um, economic growth is measured by the gross national product. The gross national product consists of basically goods bought and sold, includes exports. And apparently so many American companies have been so nervous about Donald Trump's tariffs and trade war that they exported everything out they could. They bought all the products they could without the tariffs quickly because they thought that, well, China was about to impose tariffs and they sold everything they could, got out the door quickly before uh, China had to impose tariffs on American products. So they had to quickly sell this quarter, sell our stuff quickly, buy stuff quickly before the trade war set in. You know, you understand that, right? If a flood is coming and you might be stuck in your home for several days or a windstorm or hurricane, what do you do? You go to the grocery store and you stock up on provisions so that you can eat for several days during the flood. Suffice it to say, I believe this second quarter action will not be repeated in the third quarter of 2018, and those reports will come out right before the midterm elections. But be that as it may, what if, what if economic growth is increasing? How do you increase economic growth? Well, you do it either by creating real economic policies that make Americans better off, things like infrastructure spending, spending on roads and bridges so that goods can get from one place to another, or public transit. That's a good expenditure of American things. Or you can just flood a lot of money into the economy. And what Donald Trump did is he and the Republicans did a whole bunch of tax cuts. Now, tax cuts are borrowed money. We're borrowing more than $2 trillion. It's actually closer to $3 trillion. Or in other words, we're borrowing greater money than the entire national deficit we're greatly expanding the national debt so that extremely rich billionaires can get more money back, can pay less taxes. Most of this money is going to multinational corporations and their shareholders. And one third of the shareholders of American multinational corporations aren't even American. So we're going into this massive debt that you are gonna to have to pay back probably by cutting your social security or um, raising your payroll taxes, or making you work longer, raising the retirement age, all so that you can pay off the Sultan of Brunei, or the, um, I don't know, some rich Russian billionaire oligarch. So just know that the fact that you have to work a little bit harder, at least some dictator or billionaire is gonna make money off of it. Yeah. But the thing about tax cuts is they do increase, for a short term, economic growth. And there is a time when you want to prime the pump. I'll be the first to tell you, I've said it right on this show, John Maynard Keynes said it, that when times of deep recession, deep depression, you've got to have massive government spending. Now, government spending actually primes the economy much better than a tax cut because all the money is spent, whereas most billionaires don't have to spend the money. They don't need to spend the money. They already have a billion dollars. What, what else are they going to spend on? I mean, there's only so many gold toilet seats you need. So it really doesn't prime the economy that much, but it does prime it a little bit. But when do you prime an economy? You do it, economists will tell you, and I do have a degree in economics, um, that when you're at the low point of the business cycle, when inflation is low or even have deflation, when unemployment is high, that's when you've got to get people to spend. And so the government spends a lot of money. That starts a cycle of spending. And that's really good in bad times. It's exactly the way to get out of the Great Depression. Thank you, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. It's exactly the way to get out of the recession. Thank you, Obama. But when you spend money at a time of full employment and low inflation and you don't pay it back, 
So you go into deficit spending. Well, unemployment's as low as it can be. Frankly, we have people looking for workers and because we're kicking out foreigners, we don't have the, there's lots of job opportunities that we don't have people to fill. So all you can do is, is raise prices. And it's not wages, by the way. Wages are going down. It's general level of prices, along with tariffs, which raise people's prices. And all that means that we're going to have inflation. Now, we haven't had strong inflation in this country since the 1970s and 1980s. It's been 30 years. We maybe have forgotten what 5 10% inflation looks like. It isn't pretty. Ask those of you, ask if you're not old enough, ask people who lived in the 70s and the 80s. It wasn't pleasant at all. We beat inflation. Thank you, Obama. Thank you, Jimmy Carter. We beat inflation. And now it's coming back. And that's going to hurt our growth. Because the time, you, the time you need to spend, the time you need government deficit spending is when the economy is stuck in a hole and then you, you pull on the rope to get someone out of the hole. But when someone's already out of the hole, it's like pushing on a string. It doesn't do anything. All it does is increase prices, increases inflation. I have no doubt that unemployment and inflation combined will be higher when Donald Trump finishes his first term than when Obama finished his. But economics takes a while to go through the system. It generally takes two or three years because that's the way it works. You change one thing, it takes time for these things to work their way through the economy. So Donald Trump, enjoy it while it lasts. But your economic policies are exactly the same as actually a Democrat's. Lyndon Johnson in 1969 did not want to spend money on Vietnam. He didn't want to raise taxes to pay for Vietnam. He wanted to spend money, excuse me, but he didn't want to raise taxes. So he went into deficit spending, spent a whole ton of money that he didn't pay for, and his mistakes pushing on that string in 1967, 1968, Richard Nixon continued in 1969, 1970, led to the great economic loss of an entire decade in the 1970s with massive inflation and massive unemployment. That's where your economic policies are breaking us, Donald Trump. And just remember, you heard it here first. This is Mark Levine. I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back on Thursday with more of the Inside Scoop. And for now, I'm signing off. You're listening to the Progressive Voices Network. Great job, Mark.